Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles. Last time, we finally got the chance to explore the Imperial capital of Alchemoth. We went around the northern half of the town and did a bunch of side quests. This time, we're going to be continuing our exploration of the area by going to the south side of Alchemoth and doing some more side quests. We are going to have some story progress in this video, and because we have a lot of generic quests I want to grab, I want to speed things up a little bit here just because, well... I don't want us to be spending an eternity on the same thing because Alchemoth is very symmetrical by design and we did kind of explore the northern half of it last time. And you can only say so much about first name Alchemoth, last name citizen people that are have things for you. Um, only thing that I really want to note is that you want to walk up here and discover the Fountain of Hope. It is a skip travel point, so you definitely want to do that. And while we're walking through this area though, there's a little detail that I want to point out. You're going to notice little orange teleporters just kind of sprinkled throughout Alchemoth. When NPCs go to bed at night, they will step into those, and there's a bunch of, like, apartment building looking things that are kind of hovering outside. Um, presumably they're going into those to go to bed, you can see them right here. But you can't actually go to those. It's one of the times where you can see something, but you can't go to it, and it's kind of a shame that NPCs can, but you can't. It's just a little detail that irks me a little bit, but pointing out that little not-so-great detail aside, let's go back to normal speed. Well, my boyfriend was selected for subjugation duty. What is that? That sounds really dangerous. It's a great honor. Okay, so it probably is dangerous. I don't want him to go and get hurt. Okay, well, yeah, that sounds dangerous even still. Uh, could you defeat the target of the subjugation? Oh, okay, yes. See, you gotta use the context clues. They weren't just whistling Dixie when you're in school. So we got that. You're being serious? I asked you because you look strong. I'm so glad I did. Anyway, that monster inhabits a secluded island area that we haven't been to yet. It only appears at night, and only at nights with shooting stars. You mean, like... I was gonna do a thing saying like tonight, but it actually stopped since I last looked out there. Thanks, game. Thanks a lot. So, the next quest that we want to grab is actually one that I skipped over a little bit earlier, because this one is not generic. Switch dumb into the lead, we have Nello. Ooh, that looks painful, the way he's twisting his neck right there. Nello busy being depressed. Come back later. Hmm? You seem troubled. Hey, try and talk about it. It'll make you feel better. Nello get drunk very quickly. But Nello loves drinking, so he'll always get drunk and make big problem for buddies. But Nello hears something good. There is medicine that makes you want to drink less. Need friends to find ingredients so Nello can make it. Alcohol. I too used to have a taste for it, but I gave up while my sister told me it was bad for me. I'd say this is a good time for you to consider quitting as well. N Nello knows that. But Nello really enjoy partying with buddies. Sounds like the problem that everyone in my high school had. We have losing the taste for alcohol. We have multiple quest objectives here. We're going to need to go a little bit around the world in order to get the items that we need. The Hero Pun Hero Hum Combo. <laughs> oh, that is inspirational speech if I ever heard it, Ricky. Oh, I am all with you there, Dunban. The Pollen Works over in Frontier Village have Gadada, who will trade you the Ferris Blood that you need. And uh, I got like a billion tasty sausages to get for that. Ricky was munching on this sweet golden tube-like thing, as he named it. As if his relationship with Oka didn't seem shaky enough when he admitted to having a crush on Melia earlier, um, that line is there to fuel other stuff. And our gentist to the south of the Fountain of Hope that we just discovered will give you the other item that we need, the Pagul Hot Pot. And... I need to do this five times, uh... Okay, well, uh, there's one of my complaints with this game. The trading really could be streamlined, seriously. In Xenoblade Chronicles X, if trading is still in there, you should be able to trade multiple items in the quest window and, you know, select quantities, kind of like in a store, because this can get a little bit mind-numbing when you need a lot of different items from one NPC, and it just takes forever, especially in the case of over-trading like this. You know, even as somebody who doesn't drink, looking at these ingredients, if somebody was going to shove blood in my mouth every time that I got drunk, I don't think I'd ever want to get drunk again for the rest of my life. So yeah, I can believe that this treatment works. No, it was something, not nothing. Ricky, no, it was really hard work. Really? To me, it looked like you had much less of a problem than I did. <laughs> Nello can't say thanks enough. Well, how about it? A drink to celebrate? <laughs> me? No? Meh. Friends are like little pawn. <laughs> uh, Nello's head hurt. Losing the taste for alcohol is complete, and our reward from the drunken Nopon is confuse resist. <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did there. 
Also, Dunban and Charl, I gotta level up, and we're gonna switch to daytime here. And when switching into daytime, these Alchemot citizens that are all socializing, I find what they say a little bit interesting. There's rumor somebody researching ancient Hyantia. I don't know what their name, though, okay. Uh, I think she has something I'll say. Looking for someone who knows a lot about the past, huh? Probably someone from the Ministry of Records or Research. Ah, wait, I just remembered. There are some adventurers, too. Okay. Uh, he volunteered to help Tale uh, Talia. <laughs> I almost said Telethia. Talia with her research. But me of no use. So me think it might be best to leave out if me leave Alchemoth. Okay. Might meet Talia later and learn more about her research then. What do you think we're doing gathered here like this? Keep it quiet, but Talia has asked us to do something important. Okay. You want to know why we're all gathered here? Well, I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to tell you. I'm only helping, you see. If you wish to know, please ask Talia for details. We'll have to do that at a later time, though. But Talia is not really somebody that I want to talk to right away. I just kind of find what those people say is interesting. So... Switch Ricky in the lead so we can talk to Volarin, another really cool sounding name. Could I bother you for a second? I really need some help right now. My son has just gone missing. I'm really sorry, but could you help me look for him? Ooh, sound like something wrong! Tell Ricky! Tell Ricky! We'll help you out. Tell us what's bothering you. He just disappeared the second I took my eyes off him. <laughs> Ricky's just dancing around while this guy's worried for his son's safety. That's terrible! My daughter is here, you see. She can be pretty naughty, too. So I have to keep an eye on her. If I take her with me to look, it'll just take too much time. So please, help me. Ricky have many little pawns if he know how you feel. Ricky understand why you're so worried about it. Here are pawn and friends help you! I admit, I'd never guess someone like you has children. <laughs> ah, you and me both, Valar, and you and me both. Knowing I'm not alone and feeling like this is a great comfort. So, can I count on you? We have looking for a lost son. This is a bit of an interesting quest. We need to find his son Atiel or Atiel. I I hope I'm saying that right. Um, Atiel, Atiel, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, Atiel does kind of go around Alchemoth. His location is seemingly random, rather semi-random, I guess. Uh, however, at 10 a.m., he will always be in this corner. He's kind of a wandering character, like Kenny Rowan was back in Colony Nine. So let's see you. Uh, where am I? Hope I can get back to Dad and my sis. Well, considering he's just a short walk, like 10 seconds that way, I don't think you'll really have that much of a problem. I almost said that much of a trouble. So he goes off. Hello, Valar, and thank you for finding my son. He promised not to go off without telling me again. You really saved the day. Yay, yay, happy! Ricky, really happy. Well, that takes care of that. My son is so full of energy, I can't keep up sometimes. Sounds like how I was as a kid, really. So I can relate to this. Please take this a little thanks from me. Tension Swing 3. Uh, I need to actually look at what that does because I don't think we've seen that yet. And honestly, I don't remember off the top of my head what that actually does. If I had to take a guess, I would say that auto attacks raise tension. Shrinks tension range by 20% so we can change more easily. Oh, okay, I gotcha. So it makes it there's less variance on tension gained or lost. Okay. Not really sure how much I like that. And just when you thought Shulk wouldn't get any more love in this video, we gotta play as him to see all the comments for this next one, because he has yet another one for us. Uh, wow, he says that right as soon as I do in almost the same words. It's my daughter, she's gone missing too. Sounds like you've got a problem. Well, at least Shulk just kind of sits there and thinks about things and contemplates out to himself, whereas Ricky just dances around while he's worried for the safety of his children. Still can't leave my son alone. I know he promised to behave, but he's just a child, you know? I'm really sorry, but could you please help me again? I think it's great when kids are being kids. And I guess being a kid means getting yourself lost sometimes. But you must be happy to see your children full of life, right? Of course it makes me happy. Seeing my kids happy and active makes me happier than anything. But I'd hate for anything to happen to them, so I can't help but worry. Looking for a lost daughter. How did I know that she was going to go missing? While Valarin had his back turned in the past four seconds, she went missing. So we need to go find his daughter for him, just as we did last time with for his son. Got affinity with Shulk and Dunben there. And if I'm not mistaken, she's actually really close by. You just have to go north here a little bit. And yep, I see her on the um, on the map right now. She is right over here playing in the water. Uh, well, I guess to be fair, if there was a bunch of water all over the city, I'd probably be doing the same as well. Come and see! Come and see. Eek, you found me! Huh? Not my brother. Just saying, her face is adorable. You probably were able to see it like a lot better in the quest bar, but man, I love her design so much. It's so cute. Betty was crying. I'd better go back. Bye-bye. Back to see you once again. Your daughter is safe and sound, all thanks to us. I'm glad everything worked out. 
We did good job! Let's dance! Dance, not on dance! A nop on dance? I wonder what that would go like. Probably a lot of rolling involved. <laughs> it's not much, but thank you. Our reward is strength up four. Not bad at all. Okay. So we'll grab that. And ooh, achievement spider's web. Um, dang. Uh, that. I think that means that we have a certain number of people registered in the affinity chart. Here's what the full affinity chart is looking like for us now, by the way. It's really filling out. We have completed a lot of things. Uh, Ricky finally got his level up right there. I don't think he learned a new art or anything like that. He gained that new skill earlier. So, we've gone to the north, we've gone to the south. Where to next? We're gonna head back to the main entrance. Not because I forgot anything, but because there was a quest in this area in the daytime and we just were doing a lot of stuff here at night and I didn't keep want, want to keep switching the clock around. We got this guy near this really awesome looking vehicle. Seriously, sweet ride, let me drive it sometime. Okay, no, that'd probably be a bad idea. So, he's just got a generic quest for us, nothing all that special, he just wants a present for his child, doesn't have time to get materials, and he wants some Orluga Slacks, uh, nothing says cool like Orluga Slacks for his son, uh, those things are like giant sweaty monsters, why would you want me to take off their pants so that you could give them to your kid? That's gross, man. And... Next up, this last one is going to be a little bit out of the way. We want to head back to this back wall, which you don't really go this way all that much. Like, this back wall isn't really a place that has a whole lot to it. I mean, we did have that red item orb earlier, but it just is kind of a whole lot of nothing almost all the way down. But, in the case of this, it is not a whole lot of nothing just for this one instance. Or rather, second instance, because we had something here as well. Over here, a white tails. I uh, washed, uh, wa washed one wrong and made it go all hard. I wonder why that happened. We need to get two white tails, of course, because he doesn't trust himself to not break the first one, so we gotta get him two. Really gonna get me a couple of white tails? That'd be a massive help. I can't wait. No problem. Leave it to me. And I can't believe we got affinity for that. I wasn't expecting Dunban to really chime in there. Oh, well. We already completed it. We get 22,000 gold for that. No experience, but can't complain about free money. Next up, we're gonna be changing floors. Here's what the ground floor of Alchemal is looking like. Pretty big, isn't it? Uh, we haven't really been spending much time up here, so we got a few things I want to grab while we're up on this level, and while we're not quite done taking care of everything here, pretty much everything else we got to do is going to be relatively painless. Well, except for one thing, but we'll get to that when we get to that. We got a generic quest here, right? Music in my spare time. I want to play songs, which I think is a trendy. I've just got a new girlfriend, so I'd like to craft a new instrument. That's right, you guessed it. I don't have enough materials. He knows the drill around here. Don't have ma enough materials, Shulk and his friends will grab them all for you. Doesn't matter how lazy you are or anything like that, we will. I like that guy. I always look forward to talking to him whenever I'm just tackling the quest in this area. And speaking of which, uh, we got another one right over here. That aside, though, what? Fine, see if I want to help you now. All right, Teelin, I want to talk to you. Where could they be? The textbook does doesn't have any more. It doesn't have any details at all. Hey, could you help me with something? When I grow up, I want to become a scientist. Right now, I'm trying to find out about this particular bug. It's really cool. Well, okay, you little young Pokemon collector here we see. I heard that after they hatch, they glow for a little bit. But I've only seen pictures of it in my textbook. That's why I want to see it at least once for real. Glowing insect. The only species I know like that would be the gold caterpillar. Could that be what you're after? Yeah, that's it. A gold caterpillar. It inhabits the lower Bionis, but I have no idea where. I thought you might know because you're a Homs and all. We got looking for gold bugs. All right, we're playing Twilight Princess side quest for this video. Who knew that Agatha was related to the Hyensia? Over in the southeast side of the residential district, we have a Napa named Jolele or Julili or something along those lines. And they have gold caterpillars in their inventory. Feel free to trade for them as I highly doubt you have nine of them by random chance. Oh, and if you talk to him, you get an affinity link between him and Nira Nira, of all people. I didn't actually know about that. All right, we have your nine, count them, nine bugs. Uh, apparently, you really are a freak for these things. Gonna look after them so they lay lots of eggs. Then I can see them glow when they hatch. Hopefully, not being this much higher up on the Bionis will, you know, mess with them on, like, a climate kind of level. I sure hope not, because I can believe the difference being quite a bit. We'll complete this, looking for gold bugs, and uh, fall defense. That lets you fall a greater distance without losing quite as much HP, so, you know, you can fall to greater heights. Kind of redundant. That just about does it. There are a few more generic quests that I want to grab, but I'm going to speed things up here because we have been spending a little while doing quests this video, and on top of that, well, 
this brings up one of my criticisms of Xenoblade Chronicles. I know, I criticized my favorite game of all time twice in one video, it's a new record, but... Look at the map of Alchemoth. It's very big, very spread out, and as you can see, there's all kinds of, you know, pathways and things like that up here on this upper level. You know, there's like that walkway around the perimeter, there's all kinds of things like that, and... Because of just how spread out this whole area is, and there's so few skip travel points in it, you have to do a lot of walking in Alchemoth, and it's not really interesting. It's one of very few areas that I just don't think is interesting to walk around in a long period of time. Not because I don't like it, though, but just on these long, narrow pathways of just nothing for all this time, it's one of very few times where walking around the area, you know, it looks pretty, but it does get uninteresting fast if you're having to do it repeatedly. And yes, these glass huts that you're seeing along this pathway here, you have to go to quite a few of these over the course of the game if you're going for 100%, so... Yeah, get ready to do a lot of walking because the bridges and raised walkways and all those things are really far apart and there's no skip travel points in between. I think they really could have stood to have sprinkled a few more skip travel points here and there throughout Alchemoth because it needed them. And that does it! We're going back to the Imperial Palace and I want to show off my quest log just so you can match it up with your own just to make sure that you've done all the quests that I have if you are playing along. Here's how everything's feeling. We've completed a lot of quests but there's also quite a few generic ones that we haven't done either. In addition to that, because I've been walking around Alchemoth a bunch, I want to go do the Collectopedia page for Alchemoth here, because we have all six items. I did walk around a little bit, and I was able to get all the Star Drops from Collection Quest 3 while I was doing so, because I did walk around a little bit more before coming back here, because I was missing the very last item, the Thunder Atmos, and I needed to walk around a little bit to grab that. Because of that, I was able to complete Collection Quest 3, getting all the Star Drops we need for that. For getting 100%, we get the Gush Shot for Sharla, and... This is looking pretty good. You don't, you really should not need to trade for these items, but just in case you do, that will be in the end slate of this video as you would expect. That's all I wanted to take care of in the way of side stuff, so how about we uh, follow the great crazy taxi arrow in the sky and go see Melia? Uh, this palace, man. She grew up in such a beautiful area. Pattern on the floor looks a little bit like doilies, but uh, I don't care. You know, doilies are cool. I'll give old women, older women taste on that. They really do have taste. Okay. I know not just older women like doilies. I know it's not really fair to say that, though. It's just that, you know, in cartoons and stuff growing up, you always saw that. <laughs> Let's grab this. Or grab this. Top in the teleporter, I mean. Melia, you have great taste. This is one of my favorite views in all Xenoblade Chronicles, and considering the, all that we've seen up to this point, it's got pretty stiff competition, doesn't it? <laughs> it's just, that meteor shower is just so perfect going over that, and just the architecture of that building and the starry sky behind it, and, and let's not forget the sunshine over the horizon, uh, and I don't mean, even mean Aerith sees horizon, I mean the sea that the Bionis is standing in. After all, you can see that off in the distance. <laughs> Enough taking this in to the backdrop of this amazing meteor shower. Let's go talk to Melia. See how she's feeling after the trial of the tomb. You came to see me. Ricky's friend, Millie! Oh, Melly look amazing before. Oh, Ricky's so proud. Really? It all happened so fast. What a stunning garden. The arrangements, the fountain. When the colony is up and running, can I steal some ideas? My late mother adored this place. Late mother? But I thought your mum was... Her Highness, the First Consort, is not my birth mother. Members of the Imperial family must take two wives, one Homs, one High Entia. My mother is the second consort. I am half Homs, half High Entia. Melia. Melia live here? Yes, Ricky. Since I was young, I cannot walk outside as you see me now, so this garden gives me much relief. What's wrong with how you look? Who cares if you're half Homs? You'll always be you. Their way of thinking differs from ours. Different ways, different morals. So that's why you wear a mask in public? Yes. Shulk, in less than an hour there will be a banquet in the palace. I would like you all to come. Oh, Ricky's so hungry, he could even eat Smelly or Luca. <laughs> There'll be plenty to eat. Finally, some decent grub. I haven't eaten anything since breakfast. What's on the menu? Any high-end specials? 
Do not embarrass me at this dinner. Expectations lead to disappointment. We are talking about Ryan here. What? That's the last time I sit next to you, then. <laughs> I have much to prepare. I will have someone call for you later. We can't wait. <sighs> Is there something wrong? No. You are a funny one. It can't be. Shulk! It's... the Emperor. Father! Another vision! Shulk, what did you see? On that tower. On Prison Island. <sighs> what does the siren mean? Mekon! They're coming! <sighs> <sighs> received a report from our south station. Mekon are approaching. Impossible! Kellyan, your sister's time has come. Your Majesty. There is only one course of action left. Huh? We will not waver from our destinies. Father! Kallion, take charge of the capital's defenses. I will go to Prison Island. Tell me, what happens to my father? He... It follows my last vision. We're on Prison Island. Metal Face and your father are... Prison Island? Why would father go there? No! I must go to the palace. I must stop him. I will go to the audience chamber. Wait, Melia. We're coming too. Brother! Where is father? Melia. The Imperial Staff, it's... So father has gone. I... Callion! The Emperor has proceeded to the island, alone, for the sake of the Empire. Why did you let him go alone? Father! His Majesty is fully aware. Alvis! Of what will happen to him, and what he must do before then. You saw something. I did, during our ancient divination ritual. If he knows, then why? Because he is the ruler of the Imperial family and all the High Entia, we must respect his decision above all else. But that doesn't mean... Trust him, Shulk. His fate was decided long ago. No! Shulk, we're going. But Dunban... Respect? Destiny? We don't need rules to tell us when to save the people we care for. You too, Melia. Don't give up on him. The Emperor, your father, is going to die. Dumban! There's only one thing to do. Are you with me? Of course. But you can't. We are Homs. Do what you must. But your laws don't concern us. My apologies, Dunban. No apologies needed. So, Melia, what's it to be? We go to Prison Island. <laughs>